Casey Simsy and do we have back with more London Detective Mysteria in Watson's route. Still. Because, you know, we still here. And we left off the last part having tea with Hudson and we were about to like start, keep on reading. So we read the prior line and so that's why we're here where we are. So we can read the line that we started reading before we realized we were over. So whatever you were here you know what happened just saying don't judge me anyway um outside the academy's dormitory i'm ready when you are all right kg and i stood directly facing one another he had his katana drawn and at the ready i had taken an offensive stance fist clenched tightly oh for fuck's sake we're doing this aren't we and we were focused and alert keenly gauging our distance and the options we might utilize to close it Plays and counterplays. Oh my god. Come on, Watson. Don't be like this. Like, I, I can't talk to Specie until I'm able to protect her. Oh my god, men. Good god, boys. Why are you all stupid? <laughs> then it had begun. But we're going to get a CG of the two of them fighting. I made the first move, signaling the beginning of our bout. Like, I just, I don't even have anything to, I have so many things, but like, also nothing to say about this. Like, I, nothing I can say comes close to like, like, I love this. Like, Watson is adorable, even when he's angry and like, ready to punch a Keiji. And like, there's something about a Keiji's face that is just a little scary and a little intense and like, like a puppet too because he's got his eyes are so giant that it's like I don't even I don't even know like I got you know let's just keep going like I I'm not saying I don't like it I do I actually do like it I love the KG's face but it's also it it has that same weird puppet thing that like Jack had in the other part you know where it's like it's this weird creepy pretty marionette thing he it's like puppet like it's actually a little more like chibi it's, it's just something with his eye is almost too big but it's like it's such a pretty face but his eyes are like slightly derp territory so it's like really bizarre like i like it you're like it's adorable it's sexy wait i don't know what's going on here <laughs> i don't know how to feel i do know how to feel i mean i yeah, whatever. Anyway. <sighs> Since the day after my fateful encounter with Jack the Ripper, uh, Keiji had been kind enough to join me in my training. Was it Keiji didn't say that for days when we've been trying to find Watson and he was standing there talking to us? How dare you, Keiji? It seemed clear to me that as things stood, I wouldn't be able to beat best the Ripper in a fight. And if I couldn't do that, Spacey would surely be in grave danger. When I pondered how I might become strong enough to win against so notorious an adversary, the first man who came to mind was none other than Akechi. You know what would have been funnier? Jack, can you train me on how to fight? Because I just want to fight Jack the Ripper. He'd be like, yeah, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> Initially, he refused to aid me, saying that he didn't believe in taking on students. But after my incessant pleas bordering on desperation, he eventually came around concluding that assisting me would be, for him, a form of training in and of itself. Our first bout was nothing short of a disaster. I couldn't read his movements, keep up with him, or work out how I might counter his attacks. But I wouldn't be so easily deterred. I continued to persevere, and thanks to his instruction, it began to become easier to keep up with him. And so the practical instruction continued, and no sooner... Okay. Jack! Jack! This is what I'm saying, buddy. You're not going to win because you gave him time to have a training montage. Ah! While well, I had only been able to spar with him a limited number of times, I had occasionally been able to read his movements, enough to land a blow against him here and there. You're quite the queen, keen learner. Queen learner. Wow. You're quite the keen learner, Watson. <sighs> you really think so? I do. You seem to learn quickly simply by watching others and, and imitating their actions. You may be onto something. 
And I learned what I know of surgical procedure through watching my father and picked up the piano watching my mom. Though, having said that, I still recall thinking, there's no way I can imitate that when well, my father would try to teach me how to shoot a gun. You also possess both stamina and physical strength in abundance, and though relying completely on strength to simply batter your way through a conflict will only serve to quickly fatigue you. And the key to overcoming one's opponent in battle is to read his movement and the trajectory of his weapon, formulate potential counters, and wait until the last moment. You need to think about how best to use their own strength and momentum to your advantage to emer emerge victorious, right? Precisely. The ability to calmly observe one's opponent is a useful skill for more than just detective work. Akechi nodded, returning his sword to its sheath. Thanks, Akechi. I really do appreciate you going out of your way to help me like this. I think nothing of it. Serving as your opponent has been educational for me as well. Instructing others is a sure way of teaching oneself. I only wish you showed this measure of devotion in your classwork. G s sorry I don't think I'm the one you ought to be apologizing to. Huh? And this may be none of my business, Watson, and if you feel my observation intrusive, I understand. There was no blame in Akechi's voice as he related his observations in an entirely matter-of-fact manner. And martial arts and investigation are hardly the only things that benefit from the ability to calmly observe others. What are you implying, exactly? If you undertook this training in the hopes of safeguarding something or someone, if you were bound and determined to succeed on your own strength without relying on Holmes, and then my advice to you would be to stop avoiding her. Now, Keiji never before pressed me for the reason behind my sudden interest in training. Yet it was clear now that he fully understood exactly why I wished to empower myself, and for whose sake. Now, I thought that, as I was... Being by her side could only endanger her. And that I was too weak to defend her, too frail to help her, even if that's what I wanted more than anything. Even when she was shaking with fear, I couldn't console or reassure her. After our encounter with Jack the Ripper ended with his sudden departure, I could see her frame shake and shiver as she wrapped my injured hand. And she looked as though at any moment she might burst into tears. I neither wanted to see her in that state ever again, or to be the cause of it. And then she's truly that important to you. Yes, she is. She has been ever since we were children. And this makes it hurt more when you, like, like, it's not the, oh, that's so cute. But it's the knowing that he's been in love with you since you were kids. And you're not going to remember in any other path. And you're like, happily going off with Holmes. And he's like, I'm... Happy for you guys, Holmes stole the love of my life. And we had no idea, and he had no idea, and nobody knew. Like, makes it a little sadder. You feel a little bit worse for Watson and all the other paths, don't you? Um, okay, so this is, we're back to me. Even as the sun dipped low in the sky and the streets around us darkened, Watson had yet to return home. And Pendleton would no, about, no doubt be here to collect me soon. Thank you very much for the tea, Hudson. You're most welcome. Thank you for joining me, Speezy. Other uh, streets can be dangerous at night, so do take care on your way back. I'll be fine. And take care, Hudson. I stepped out of the apartment, watching as Hudson waved to me from the doorway. By the time I finally stepped under the street, twilight had settled over the city. I wonder if I came a little too early. I hope I don't leave and miss him by only a quarter of an... by only a quarter hour. A cold wind whipped through the cobblestone streets, threatening to drain away the warmth I had imbibed from Hudson's tea. She shouldn't leave until Hud- Like, you know what I mean? Like, he comes to get her. Such a chill out tonight. I wonder if Watson is caught out in this cold as well. Next time, I swear I'm going to talk with him. Whatever it takes. Staying mindful of passing carriages, I began walking along Baker Street, the ubiquitous London fog now descending on the city. What part of I will come get you did you not get from Pendleton? Oh, she's going to get herself in trouble. When I had last passed this way on foot, Watson was here beside me. I thought back to the time he had escorted me back to the mansion and felt a longing to enjoy his company again. What if he's pushed himself too hard and is now experiencing the effects of that? Oh, dear. I do hope he's not come to any harm. If this continues as it had been, 
and I never get the chance to have a proper conversation with him again, I know I'll, regr I know I'll regret it. Though I had walked up and down Baker Street countless times, I found my pace slower than usual, wading through a quagmire of doubts. At last I passed by a dimly lit alleyway when suddenly a voice from the fog-shrouded darkness startled me. It's Jack, isn't it? Found you. <laughs> I knew it was going to be Jack the Rare. A voice startled me. Found you. That was fun. I like the way that came out. <laughs> that came out well. I like that. I had neither the time nor the presence of mind to scream. Without warning, I was ensnared and drawn into the back alley. Of course. Uh, oh, is it? Sorry. If I don't kill you, it's me who's gonna get it. I know this voice. The wind blowing in from the main street thinned the fog just enough to allow me a view of my captor. The moment I saw the silvery glint of the claws upon his hand, my blood ran cold. The sight of the same razor claws that had pierced Watson's arm and the faint smell of blood in the air transfixed me to the spot. You're Jack the Ripper! I, I need to get away! I struggled desperately to break free of his grip, but he simply dug his claws that much deeper into my arm. Yeah! First you, then that fool. My mind had gone completely blank with fear. My body was shaking, and my ability to speak had left me. I can't break free, but I have to get away somehow. I must! You won't feel no pain. I shall make your death a graceful one. What should I do? Is is my life to end here? Kick him in the nuts. Not, I mean, I'm just guessing that'll stop him. Before I even had a chance to make amends with him? Goodbye. Jack the Ripper raised up his hand, swinging in with great force. Stray rays of moonlight glinted off his claws, throwing their momentary gleam over my face. The sun had set beneath the skyline of Baker's... Um, I'm assuming this is Watson? Uh. Yeah, okay. The sun had set over the skyline of Baker... Whatever, anyway, that line. Uh, KG is probably right. All along, I've been so focused on my own deficiencies that I've been deaf to what she's been trying to say. After parting with the Keiji, I'd begun to make my way back, but each step was slow and plodding as I mulled over the state of things. Damn it all! Why am I such an idiot? I wish I could just go and see her straight away, then I... Hmm? What's this? As I looked down, I noticed something lying on the ground where the street led into an alleyway. If I'm not mistaken, I harbored few doubts that I'd seen this very handkerchief before. First of all, it's white, like I'm sure like 90 million handkerchiefs are. But also, huh, I think this might be her. It's got her name on it. That's about the only reason you would fucking know it's her handkerchief over anyone else's is all I'm saying. It appeared to be the very same as Spacey had with her mere days ago. What are the odds that somebody else is Whitely? <laughs> well, Whitley, you know, as I say it. And yes... Her surname's embroidered on it. And with that, there could be no doubt. But what is it doing lying here? Could she have come to visit our office? No! It couldn't be! I can never mistake the sound of Spacey's voice. Or just someone screaming. I mean, who cares? Well, that's not her! Wait. <laughs> you know what he was? No, 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 it's not Spacey. Some other lady screaming, not gonna help her. Damn! Please let me not be too late. And I dashed with all haste into the alley, toward the sound of her voice as fast as my legs would carry me. Were we Holmes and Holmes's route? Did we go into this where we were like in his head? Like I don't remember that. <laughs> like I just feel like this is like, but this and Code Realize are both like this. We keep switching back and forth. Jack the Jack the Ripper's blade-like claws hovered over me. The momentary pause before the strike of the serpent. In these final moments, I closed my eyes, awaiting the blossom of pain that would tear me from this world. Get down, Spacey! What? Instead of a stabbing pain, the next sensation was that of a familiar voice alighting on my ears. A voice far more filled with warmth and goodness than the icy words of Jack the Ripper. Spacey, are you alright? 
Ah! The sound of a dull thud reached my ears, and Jack the Ripper released his hold on me. I stumbled backwards, but did not fall, instead being caught up in a strong pair of arms. CG. Timidly, hesitantly, I opened my eyes. I looked up and into the face of my rescuer. Really? No? No, CG? You gave us all that? Nothing? Okay. Watson? Are you hurt? He didn't do anything to you, did he? All this time I had lamented his distance, but he felt so far away. Now, here he stood, holding me in his arms. I had to read that slightly, like... <laughs> now here he stood, holding me in his arms! I... I'm alright. Uh, no injuries. The relief washed over me, the anxiety of mortal danger still shook my body. Damn it! Can't seem to do anything right! His anguished words lingered in the air. I'll say, did you come to sieve me from... To sieve me... Oh, save me, I'm assuming... I'm save, okay. I was just really struggling with the with the way they typed the accent out, okay. Did you come to save me from making a fox onto this one? A fox onto th a fox hunt out of this. Oh, did you come to save me from making a fox hunt out of this? Oh, I get it. You came to save me from having to hunt you down, basically. Okay, I get what he's saying. You know, it's the accent and it's the, like, lingo that they're using the old-timey that I was like, wait, 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 wait. Let me make sure I understand what he's saying so I can fucking read it properly. <laughs> All right, anyway. I'll say, did you come to save me from making a fox hunt out of this? Like, hell, I did. That was not the right way they typed it, but I can't, you know. He gently released me and strode to stand before me, shielding me behind him. I'm gonna beat you down so completely, they'll still speak of it a hundred years on. And while I'm at it, perhaps smack myself for being such a fool. You remember how pitiful our last bout was? It eats at you. I can see it. I can't deny that. But there's something far more unforgivable. I'll not let you get off with trying to hurt her again. Watson stared down the infamous criminal with a gaze more piercing and angry than I had ever seen him show before. That don't mean a damn thing to me. Just hurry up and die. Stay back, Spacey! Watson and the Ripper both made their move. Once a fool, always a fool. You can't change it no matter what you do. Watson! Jack swung his clawed hand toward Watson. I sharply drew in a breath and held it, clenching my teeth. I mean, he's like Edward Scissorhands over here, like, Not a chance! What? Watson deftly evaded Jack's attack, catching his arm and twisting it upward in the same motion. It happened so quickly that it was all I could do to follow their most overt actions. Well, well. The pretty puppetness. It's also, like, the way the background and everything, like, the art around it, like, like, the swirly thing here. It's, like, got the very, like... I can't... You know what I mean? Like, I can't describe why it gives me that vibe, but anyway... I see you got a bit more savvy in you now. Of course. Did you think I'd come looking for a rematch otherwise? Watson applied more pressure, twisting Jack's arm further. It's true that I may just be an average man. But this average man can tell right where you're aiming. Gah. Watson hammered his clenched fist straight into Jack's chest. Gah. There's only so much an ordinary bloke like me can do. Watson, look at him. He looks so angry. Pouty face. That's why I'm never going to forget what Akechi taught me, or what I have to do. I'll take you down with everything I got and keep Spacey safe. Watson brought up his fists, lightly crouching into a defensive stance. His focus on Jack the Ripper did not waver, even for a moment. Take me down. Don't try and be a hero, you apeless idiot. You apeless idiot. I think it's supposed to be hopeless idiot, right? Don't try and be a hero, you helpless idiot. That sounded awkward. That sounded closer to what his accent probably should be, not what I've been giving him, anyway. The killer slowly rose to his feet, striding silently toward Watson. There! 
Seeming to calculate exactly where Jack the Ripper was about to strike, Watson once again evaded the fatal blow. See, again, Jack, this is why you don't give him time for a training montage. Playing the hero is what detectives do. Get. Taking advantage of his exiting momentum, he led into a powerful roundhouse kick of which Jack bore the full brunt. Suddenly, a metallic clinking jingled through the alley. Oh yeah, it really is his leg kicking him. Wow. That's his claw! Individual segments of the claw-like apparatus bounced along the ground before coming to rest. Jack the Ripper leapt back from Watson, clutching one of his hands. Damn you! You'll have a far harder time killing me- Oh, that's Watson. I was like, well, how are we gonna have a far harder time killing him now? Wait. You'll have a far harder time killing me now. Little bastard. Jack's shoulders quaked and shivered as he spoke. You can't take killing from me. What would I have left? It was the first time I had seen anything resembling hesitation. Perhaps even, even confusion from him. I do what I'm told. Obey the orders they give. I killed traitors to the organization. It's what I was born to do. It's the only reason I live. Jack the Ripper swung his other clawed hand at Watson. <laughs> Correctively predict uh, correctly predicting the arc of the Ripper's attack, Watson evaded it at the last moment. Without delay, he immediately grabbed the killer tightly by the arm and, in a deft redirection of his momentum, sent Jack hurtling into a nearby wall. K <laughs> For shit's sake! Shaking, Jack the Ripper rose unsteadily to his feet. But the force of, the, of bracing his collision with the wall had broken the tips of the claws on his other hand, leaving them blunted. He's like, oh, you broke my claws! Man, I broke my nail. One must calmly observe his opponent. Watson. Watson slowly relaxed his stance, still on guard for any sudden movement. Hey, Jack. If that's who you are, we're all of the Ripper murders. Uh, we're all of the Ripper murders in the papers. Really, your work. He spoke calmly and pointedly. And the murder we witnessed you committing, and the ones in the news—they've got superficial similarities, sure. But those claws you wear couldn't have made the kinds of wounds found on those women's bodies. And your point? Get to it. I ain't nothing more than a pawn. Utterly disposable. Should I lose me purpose? It's beneath the ground is a corpse that'll suit me next. Yes, that's exactly right. I'm glad you understand. I don't know who this is. A sinister, unfamiliar voice resounded through the dingy corridor of the alleyway. Suddenly, the face of the man we knew only as Jack the Ripper blanched with a look of utter fear. A lone figure, figure seemed to congeal from within the fog, the cadence of his footsteps resounding in the stillness. Oh, it's Colonel Moran. I was like, is it going to be like Moriarty? Who is it? No, it's Colonel Moran. Of course it's Colonel Moran. It's always Colonel Moran. I mean, why wouldn't he be? He set up Holmes and, you know, Holmes Watson. And, okay. Colonel Moran. The man was fair-haired and clad in a military uniform with eyes as unfeeling as Horfrost. <laughs> Colonel Moran. I remember hearing that name in Hyde Park. I remember the voice I gave him in Holmes, so it doesn't matter. Watson took my arm, opening distance between us and the Colonel. Holmes, the younger's assistant, and the daughter of the Whitley family. I see you've been taking good care of my fellow here. How does he know me? No, permit me to correct myself. After all, he's no longer an associate of mine. The second the words left his lips... <gasps> uh! He nonchalantly raised a handgun and shot Jack the Ripper through the leg. Jack collapsed to the floor, whilst Colonel Moran kept the muzzle leveled directly at him, expression completely unchanged. I feel so bad! Poor Jack! Why? Why do this now? He's your compatriot, isn't he? How can you just raise a gun against him like that? You're a very particular fe or peculiar fellow, Mr. Detective. The useless crony of mine was trying to dig his claws into you just moments ago. 
Oh, I defend him now. Colonel Moran spoke with a derisive sneer. I can't, I don't know what voice I gave him, and I don't know what's happening with it, so just, it is what it is. He has betrayed my expectations and disobeyed my orders. How is a beast with broken talons supposed to capture and kill its prey? Failure carries with it a, pr a price, and that price must be paid. Surely even you can understand that much. Poor Jack. I feel so bad for him. Jack's expression was contorted with spasms of agony, and yet, as he gazed down the barrel of Colonel Moran's gun, his eyes had the dull sheen befitting a man who had relinquished all hope. If we tried to move, we risked the colonel turning his gun on us. Thus rooted where we stood, all we could do was take in the pitiful scene before us. I poured so much effort into raising you. So much love. As a father, the least I can do is take you from this world with my dominant hand. Farewell, Jack. Colonel Moran fingered the gun's trigger once more. Jack simply looked on absent-mindedly, as though he no longer fully processed what was taking place. However, the expected shot never came. No! Watson quickly scooped up one of Jack's broken claws where it lay on the ground and hurled it at Moran. The gun was sent tumbling from his hand and fell with a clatter to the ground. Watson! You... What are you thinking? Are you trying to show me pity? Of course I'm not, you fool! I don't intend to forgive you! I intend to turn you over to Scotland Yard! That's why I won't stand to stay idle and watch you escape justice by being executed here! And Jack's like, yeah, no, I'm gonna go. He, okay, like this is like, you know what it is? It's like the top hat, and he's like so like creepy puppet mad hatter is what it is. It's like the creepy beautiful, like he's got the creepy beautiful puppet vibe, which is just weird because puppets are kind of creepy, but he's beautiful and it's like mad hatter. And it's like, I just, I'm very like, I just, It, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but it literally is because he's got that and you're like, it's kind of like the creepy puppet vibe. It's a little Mad Hatter, but it's beautiful and I like it and I just feel weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like puppets are creepy. You know what I mean? Or it's kind of like that first time you have like the girl crush and you're like, wait, am I a lesbian? Like, dude, I wait, no, but you know, but you're not. But you know, everyone's got to have, everyone has a crush and at least one person of the same sex they do. You're like, yeah, nope, got that girl crush or got that man crush if you're a guy. You know what I mean? But it's like, but there's that, like, that first time when you realize it's that awkward. You're like, wait, this is, oh, oh, no, okay, it's kind of, it's fine. But in, but it, this is different because it's kind of like, I think puppets and dolls are creepy. Like, there, there's a creepiness, and, but yet I find the creepiness attractive. I'm like, I like this. I'm digging this creepy. And you're like, that feels awkward. And it seems like that should be wrong and weird. <laughs> and I shouldn't like it. You know what I mean? Like, you ever had that feeling where you're like, this is creepy and weird, but I like it. I dig it a lot. And you're like, wait, what is wrong with me? Like, I don't know. Oh, but I dig it. Anyway. <laughs> a mere assistant dares to meddle in my affairs. I don't know what's happening with his voice. Eh, whatever. Colonel Moran's calm face sneer twisted into a mask of murderous anger. But it was at that moment that another unexpected interloper arrived on the scene. Scene. Sherlock Holmes, probably, but I was really hoping Pendleton. Yep. Wait. Yeah, okay, it's got to be Holmes. It's not Watson, anyway. Like, John Watson, you know what I mean? Well, now, when I came to Baker Street on behalf of my son, this certainly isn't the scene I expected to stumble upon. It's been some time, Colonel Moran. Again, I don't know what voice I give Holmes. Every single time he shows up, it's a different voice. I don't even know. Sherlock Holmes! He's still a pretty goddamn man. Mr. Holmes! Miss Whitley, William, I'm glad to see the two of you are safe. I'm sure my son will be relieved to know it as well. But truly, Colonel Moran, I was not expecting to see you a free man. Just what kind of deal must you have proffered, I wonder? You know him? I once bested him in battle, and he was locked up deep beneath the Tower of London. 
My heart has been dead ever since that day. The day you humiliated me. And now, I shall exact upon you an even greater vengeance, Holmes. Both you and your son will feel Spellbound's wrath. I'm afraid I can't have that. Uh, bringing me to harm is one thing, but I'll not have you sully my son's good name. My, how you've fallen. To think the mastermind renowned as Spellbound's right-hand man has reached such a nadir. Nadir? I don't know what that is. I can scarcely believe you're doing out your dirty work to mere children like him. Doling out your dirty work to mere children like him. I see you've still lost none of your arrogance. Oh, how I long to see that smug, detestable face fraught with fear and despair. There's always a despair arc in everything. Suddenly, from far away, we heard the telltale whistle of Scotland Yard's forces. I kind of... Is it just wrong that I want Jack to escape? I don't want him to get caught! Like... Run away, Jack, while the adults are arguing! <laughs> Escape! Holmes, one day I shall take your life with my own hands. It'll be I who delivers that final blow. And as for you, assistant to Holmes the Younger, you'll regret getting in my way. Of that I assure you. Spellbound does not suffer those who have seen its members to live. Neither women nor children are accepted. And I'm a woman and a child! <laughs> After turning his head to cast a cruel glare directly at me, Colonel Moran stepped back into the fog and was gone. We know he's the one that fucking killed our parents. Wait! Oh, hold on, William. If we don't catch him, your son will continue to remain a, remain a suspect. It's too dangerous to chase him when the fog is this thick. There's a very real possibility we may run afoul of an ambush if we try. And besides, we have a matter that needs tending to right here. Sherlock Holmes looked across the quiet alley. His gaze fell upon Jack the Ripper, who had struggled to his feet, hand pressed against his wounded leg. Jack, your leg... Richmond Park. Pardon? Oh, that was me. <laughs> Pardon? He loves hunting. Fox hunting to be more particular. If it allow him to offer up the ultimate prize to his master... The colonel would cut off any number of subordinates. S stop What are you trying to do? Don't speak to me no more. I ain't asked you for aid. I don't want to be bothered by your kindness any more than I got to. Seeing fools like you bungle your way to victory sickens me. Wh what Footsteps could be heard, and another man emerged from the curtain of fog. Oh, Holmes, whatever's the matter with you? You simply turned and dashed off in the middle of a conversation. A band of officers from Scotland Yard arrived on the scene, led by Sergeant Ryan. <laughs> really? They're all like, ha ha ha, and, <gasps> and then Holmes just dashes off like, a, like he fucking knows what's going on. He's <laughs> like, danger, I sense danger. He's like, I'm sorry, somebody sent up the Sherlock beacon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was me. I have the Sherlock signal in my pocket. It's like a little flashlight. It's like the bat signal. <laughs> anyway. I must know what happened to that lady tutor after that. You cannot simply leave me hanging. I must know why the case ended. Ah, he escaped! At the sound of Watson's voice, I turned to where Jack the Ripper had been seemingly moments before. He's gone? When did he go? He had stood there clutching his leg less than a minute ago. Now all that remained to suggest he had ever been there at all were bloodstains and the remnants of the shattered claws. His injury wasn't something one could simply walk away from. Where could he have gone? Apologies, Sergeant, but I had priority. But I had to prioritize an ongoing case, that of Jack the Ripper. What? I thought he was only active in the East End. Assumptions are the enemy of investigation, my good fellow. The key here is not to presume that there's... That there is not merely a single Jack the Ripper. Wh what do you mean by that? Sergeant, I need you to increase Scotland Yard's presence in this area and put them to searching right away. I shall join you in the manhunt, of course. He's injured, so if we act quickly, we may be able to follow his tracks. Th then I want to come as well. Yet it was not to be. The instant I strode forward to join them, it became clear that something was wrong. No, why now? I can't put any weight on my leg. Perhaps it was a sudden release of the tension that had built up during the encounter. Whatever the cause, I found myself quite unable to support my own frame, falling to my knees. Miss Pacey, 
Are you alright? I'm fine, Watson. I'll be up and about in a minute. Watson had fought with such bravery on my behalf, and yet here I was, rendered momentarily un unable to even stand. I hung my head, feeling thoroughly pitiful. I'm sorry. I'm useless, aren't I? And Spacey, it's I who needs to say sorry. Huh? Watson knelt down and took me into his arms, scooping me up from the cold ground. W Watson, in my surprise, yelp, uh, in my surprise, yelp perhaps a little too loudly. His face was closer now, and I felt his chest rise and fall with the cadence of his breathing. I'll take her to the office, Mr. Holmes. All right, I'll leave matters here to me. But Watson, what about Colonel Moran and Jack the Ripper? Right now, your well-being is more important than either of them. No, I'm fine. Go and aid the search teams. Sorry, but I can't just leave you like this. His expression was so serious, so straight-faced, that there was little I could offer up in reply. Be sure to hold on tight. Or if you'd rather try walking, you can lean on me. I'll try and get you there as fast as I'm able, but I don't want to be too rough. If you want me to slow down, just say so, all right? All right. I nodded, clinging weakly to the front of his shirt. Don't forget, William. A lady is to be treated with kindness and care. I understand that perfectly well. With that, he departed, marking his, uh, making his way as quickly as he was able whilst carrying me. Before I knew it, I was resting my head against his chest. Our destination was the Baker Street office. <sighs> He's so forthright and open with his feelings. A marked difference from my own son. I wonder how does one raise a child such that they become like that? And more pressing, however, how did Colonel Moran weasel out of his imprisonment? Could it be that he's alive and secured the Colonel's release? No. I saw him fall from that waterfall with my own eyes. No man could have survived such a plunge. Wouldn't it be funny if, like, Pendleton is Moriarty? Um, Moriarty is in this. He's in the title. Not James Moriarty. I'm assuming it's Moriarty's son, because I forget the name, but you know what I mean. Um, but he's in it, in the title thing, and he's yet to show up in any of these paths, so that's interesting to me. Ahem. The situation has been resolved, at least for the moment. And do feel free to stop slinking about and come out now. So I have no idea who's saying this. I'm impressed you noticed. I'm quite confident in my ability to linger in the shadows. wondering i was really wondering when he said come out now and i was like i wonder if it's pendleton but i doubt it i just always wanted to be pendleton with like a voice came out of nowhere is it pendleton it's not sometimes it is but most of them it's like it's it's probably sherlock holmes but i really wanted to be pendleton so every single time there's a voice i'm like it's pendleton is it pendleton i want it to be pendleton this time it was anyway i'm impressed you noticed i'm quite confident in my ability to linger in the shadows <laughs> you're quite the legend in your line of work and with good reason, both as butler and otherwise. Oh, God, do we get some... Are we getting some super secret Pendleton backstory that we don't know? I should have known I wouldn't be able to outwit you. Do you ship this as much as I do right now? Like, I love Pendleton, but I'm just saying, I wouldn't... I wouldn't say no to this either. Can you look after the two of them? I intend to pursue Colonel Moran. Very well. After passing down Baker Street, we arrived at the office. Um, Watson? I really am fine. You don't have to... Uh, worry. Watson, however, did not appear quite ready to set me down. Honestly, I can stand and walk without help now, so if you could let me... No. I beg your pardon? As I turned my head to look at him, he pulled me tightly into his embrace. W Watson, I don't want to let you go. Oh, he hugged me tightly, voice racked with anguish. Had I arrived just a minute later, I'd have found you dead in an alley. If that had happened, I would never have been able to forgive myself. The regret would have haunted me for the rest of my life. He's shaking. Is he, is he crying? He was now clutching me so tightly that it hurt. 
But greater than the discomfort in my body was the pain I felt within my chest. I'm alive. Alive in here with you, Watson. She's almost got the jellyfish hair, too, because she's got this, like, it's, like, slightly, like, longer than shoulder, like, and then she's got the octopus underneath. Like, she's, like, super fancy jellyfish hair. I don't know why they do this. What is with the weird bowl mullets? It's like a bowl cut, you know what I mean? Like, you got the cut all the way around, except for, like, I don't mind the, the pieces or, like, even her hair, but, like, it's, like, there's the full cut, and then there's the... Uh, it's the under mullet. It's the under mullet. What the fuck? Like, what's the deal with the mullet? Like, it was never a good look, and we just gotta stop with it, Japan. Like, this is shit. Like, don't do this to their hair. Why? Why is this a thing? Why do they do it? It drives me crazy. There's always a character with some badass hair. Like, like the Yamazakis. You know, Yamazaki was such a great character, ruined by a fucking terrible haircut. The rat tail and the super short mini bang things going on with, like, the six head. Like, look, there's a four head and there's the five head that he had. Like, it, with the super short bangs. Like, no, nobody looks good with those. Like. And actually, in the Hockey Wokey Kyoto Wins, like, limited edition thing that I bought. They have, like, the art book. And in there, they had, like, a different look for Son and, and for Yamazaki. And I was like, they should have done Yamazaki like this. His hair was way better. And it was like. He would have been so much better if he would just left his hair like this. So know what they did to him. <sighs> anyway. Alive because you came when you heard me cry out. And because you were there with me when I was in peril. Watson, I gently extended my arms to return his embrace. Only then did I realize that I too was trembling. What is it, Spacey? Watson, you weren't injured, are you? When I touched him, I felt as though he tensed slightly, a pause in the cadence of his breathing. But I was determined to press him further. I wanted a clear answer. You are all right, aren't you? The sound of my voice was timid as my fingers searched the contours of his broad back. I'm fine. Nothing cut. Nothing broken. I'm glad to hear it. It's going to be all right. I'm right here for you. I'm here now because you saved me. If he hadn't come, then surely I would have died there in that alley. The paralyzing fear I had felt when Jack the Ripper stood ready to end my life washed over me as the memories played out once more in my mind. Miss Beasy, you're shaking. I'm sorry, Watson. I'm so sorry. I've caused you no end of worry. My head swam with a rush of mixed emotions. Remorse, unease, fear, and relief all intermingled, rendering me barely capable of conversation. Throughout it all, I continued to shake softly. The adorableness of the two of them together. It works. It works for me. It's all right, Speezy. It's all right now. You're safe here. He loosened his embrace slowly stroking my back. His hands were perhaps not the most dexterous, but I welcomed the warmth of their touch. You've been through a terrifying ordeal. I'm sorry I left you alone. I never should have. His touch was kind and gentle, full of the same warmth with which one might reassure a frightened child. I couldn't decide whether it was fear of the danger now past or safety I now felt that led me to the brink of tears. Hoping to keep myself from crying, I brought my hand up to rub the corners of my eyes. I'm sorry, Spacey. Oh. Suddenly, Watson placed his own hand over mine. A single tear, escaping my best attempts to bottle them in, trickled down my cheek. You shouldn't rub your eyes like that. He lifted his hand to my cheek. With a flick and a brush, he wiped my tear away and dried my cheek. I wasn't sure how I ought to respond. His gesture was so kind, his hands so warm, that I felt myself beginning to choke up once more. Watson? Hmm? I... I was so afraid. I thought I would never see you again, and the thought ached within me. I could scarcely articulate, articulate the maelstrom of thoughts that whirled through my mind, but Watson seemed to accept my admission with great grace. It's all right. His hand still rested upon my cheek. He 
He tilted my face upward toward his own. Pendleton is so gonna cock block. I just feel like that's like, it'll be all right now. I'm right here. This is so like the almost kiss moment. But I'm just waiting for Pendleton to bust in and be like, my lady. And you'll be like, God damn it. <laughs> like, I'm just waiting for the cock block. There's always a cock block. Anyway. Reassured by his voice, I felt I could relax for perhaps the first time that night. As if in response, he gently drew me closer to him once more. We're closer now. Like, literally. Realizing how near to him I was, my heart beat faster. Is this love? My heart continued its staccato beat. Yet within? Yet within. I was... Oh, yet within. I was calm within. Content. Entirely at peace. That makes more sense. Watson. Safe in his embrace, I closed my eyes. I felt his breath upon my cheeks, gently surrendering myself to him. My care, my sorrow, my hope and all. Such was my intent at the very least. I fucking told you Pendleton was gonna cock block! Pendleton! <laughs> I fucking love you, but I hate you, buddy. Dude, I knew it! You knew! It's like, it's getting close. He's leaning his hands on your cheek. You're like, we're not getting the kiss. This is not gonna happen. And you're like, well, Pendleton, Pendleton's gonna bust in like, ta-da! Literally right in between them, like, hi, what were you doing? You weren't about to kiss her, were you? How dare you? <laughs> like, Fucking Pendleton. I love him so fucking much. Right now, he deserves a nut punch, though. Like, how dare you? Look, unless you're going to be the one to kiss me, you get the fuck out of here and let me kiss Watson, all right? Like, excuse me. I apologize for my late arrival, my lady. There's quite a commotion sweeping the area. There's something about Jack the Ripper being sighted and... P Pendleton? Look at the look on his face! I just... I just imagine I'm busting it like... Oh my god, there's such a thing about Jack the Ripper with the, look on his, with the look on his face that says, I will fucking kill you, Watson. Get your fucking hands off her. That look on his face, he's like, ah, I'll fucking cut you. <laughs> I just love it so much. God, I love Pendleton. Oh, Pendleton has got to be one of the greatest fucking characters in one of these games ever. All the, all the characters in this game are great. I like all of them. I like all of them. But... Pendleton, and there's always games where, like, the side characters are awesome, but I feel like Pendleton is just, I think, my all-time favorite side character in a game. Because he is just... God, he's just amazing. Like, he just always sweeps in. You're like, oh, Pendleton, come rescue me. And you're like, Pendleton literally shot that guy. He was like, I'm just sitting down here. Fucking like, wait, wait. Got my sights on him. Just like a fucking sharpshooter. Just fucking taking the motherfucker out. Like, ha! Huh. I protected you. Like, exactly what I wanted him to do. And <laughs> like, and this, he's just there hiding in the shadows. Like, oh, hello, Holmes. I'm just hiding in the shadows. Oh. Now he's like busted in like, Badam! so you hear, I hear the, I hear Jack the Ripper's running about. How are you doing? Touch her again and I'll kill you, Watson. The look on his face. <laughs> God, it's priceless. Oh God, Pendleton. Oh, you're my fucking favorite. I love you so fucking hard. <sighs> Upon hearing the familiar voice, and at the throwing open of the door, Watson and I nearly leapt out of each other's arms. Is something the matter? He knows exactly! He was like waiting for it. He's like, Hey, wait, wait, he's about to kiss her? Bust in the door! Oh my god! You could tell by the look on his fucking face when he came in with that look like, I'll fucking kill you, Watson. He's like, Is something wrong? I'll kill you. <laughs> I love him. Oh, Pendleton, this is... Oh, this certainly is uh, a pleasant evening to be about, isn't it? Not particularly. Granted, the sky has been obscured by clouds and fog since this morning. Pendleton, you certainly are punctual. Yes, very punctual. I didn't wish to keep you waiting even a minute more than I had to. Though I can't help but notice that you both appear rather flustered at present. He's like... And then he looks, look, the face he's giving is so innocent, like, you seem rather flustered, but he knows, he's like, I'll fucking kill you, like, it's nothing, we hadn't even done anything yet, yet, <laughs> this is so awkward, but it's great, I love it, because 
Pendleton is making them awkward and weird, and Pendleton is like, yet. <laughs> it's merely the exhaustion of our art, or of our art. It's merely the exhaustion of our ordeal catching up with us. As much as I tried to convince him, and perhaps myself, of it, my pulse and the redness of my face took far longer than usual to return to normal. Afterwards, Pendleton and Watson decided that, considering how tired I was, it would be preferable for me to spend the night in the office. I think you should use the room further inside, Spacey. It's certainly tidier than this one. All right, thank you. I'll do that then. Really, she can you really? Pendleton's like, she should stay here. He's like, I'll fucking take her, Watson! Keep your hands off, my lady. I slowly rose to my feet, making for the back room. I just wanted to tell you again how sorry I am. You ended up suffering such a terrifying ordeal all because of me. Watson? Uh, never you mind. Uh, good night, Spacey. All right. Good night, you two as well. A uh, Good night to you as well. Okay, that makes more sense. I continued onto the bed in the back room. He seemed rather sad just now, didn't he? I mean, wouldn't you be sad? He was totally going to get some and he got nothing because Pendleton. Got Pendleton blocked. When he told me not to rub my eyes, that was just like back then. So he really was that boy. Climbing into bed and lying down, my thoughts drifted back to my childhood. But long before any vivid memories coursed through my mind, I was overcome by the desire to sleep and drifted off. Once Spacey had closed the door behind her, Pendleton approached me. Oh, God. Look at his face! Watson. Y yes? Thank you very much for saving Lady Whitley today. So you know, then. Indeed. Still, I would ask that you not do anything further that would cause her worry. His expression was so stern that it nearly robbed me of a meaningful reply. She has a tendency to attract danger even at the best of times. And there's no guarantee she won't find herself in peril again. Look at how precious he is when he's worried. He's also like a doll. You know what? He reminds me of Nameless. He literally reminds me of like a beautiful man doll that you have in yourself. Like, he's a beautiful doll. And he just comes to life one day and butler's in your house. And you're like, I just, I'm okay with this. Like, I'm okay with this. <laughs> like, I need a Pendleton doll that's just going to come to life. Like, yay! Oh my god. Well, I... Do you disagree? I can't. Not when all you say is true. I had been so caught up with the scope of my own shortcomings that I had scarcely stopped to think that my actions might have exposed her to further danger. I felt so pitiful, so frustrated and angry with myself. My flaws dogged me, cackling at me from the periphery of my vision, ever with an earshot but ever out of reach. When it comes to matters concerning you, Watson, Lady Whitley will ignore the potential dangers that might result from her actions. She's a kind spirit, as I'm sure you're aware. Ever since she was a young child, she's always thought first of others, heedless of her own pain and sadness. I know. She'll always just say that it's nothing, or that she's fine, even when she isn't. She won't let herself cry, even when she's scared or sad. She hasn't changed at all since then. Watson, have you... Actually, Pendleton, I met Spacey months, once when we were younger. It was... I was only... It was only the one time, by chance. Yet these many years later... At these many years later, I've never been able to forget that meeting. I desperately hoped to see her again. That I could somehow help her. Somehow see her smile. That encounter is what led me to take the path in life I've chosen. And ultimately, I truly was able to see her again. But that's not enough for me anymore. Oh, Watson, you're like professing your feelings to like Pendleton. I want to be a man strong enough to protect her. And to keep her from harm, but... Oh, Watson, you are a kind and considerate young man. However, I'll fucking kill you if you touch her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, however... Kindness alone will not be enough to keep her safe. Pendleton's frankness landed like a fist to the belly. You'll need the resolve to safeguard her without question, even if it should mean she comes to hate you. Even if doing so means hurting her is unavoidable. And so I ask, are you capable of this? 
I couldn't find the words to reply to him. If you have even the slightest, slightest lack of confidence in your ability to do so, I'm of a mind to lock her in the mansion for the time being, for her own safety. <laughs> Pendleton's a little fucking crazy. My thoughts flashed to the steel talent hands of Jack the Ripper, and to the mercilessly, merciless icy stare of Colonel Moran. It was difficult to imagine that, after being disowned and nearly executed in an alley by the Colonel, and Jack the Ripper would ever again haunt us on his behalf. Hunt us on his behalf. But it was very clear to me that Moran still wanted us dead. The way before us was perilous. We had merely switched one deadly foe for another. I knew full well what I ought to answer if her safety was my primary concern. You're a far more dependable person than I, Pendleton. If that's what it'll take to keep her safe, I'm fine with it. I see. Very well, then. In that case, we ought to carry her out while she's sleeping. Are you alright with that? Yes. Once Spacey was safely within the carriage, departed the Baker Street office. I watched as it grew smaller, then passed entirely out of sight in the fog. But even when it had left my vision, I continued to gaze out at the road where it had been. Over and over, I tried to reassure myself that this was the right thing to do. And that this was the best course for her. Spacey, I... Yet, deep within my heart, I couldn't bring myself to accept it as the truth. Oh, This is the perfect place to end it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to wrap this part up here. And we will continue in the next chapter in the next part. So, the first and last of the most terrible act of a most terrible act the first and last of a most terrible act wait that sounds like a bad ending let me bring up my guide for a second i don't have it open because there was no chapters oh no this is just another uh no, we're definitely, okay, we're definitely going into, the, we should, I mean, I followed the guide, we should be in the destined end, but we are, because in the bad ending, we don't even get this chapter, we just go straight from Watson versus the Ripper, like, uh, to the bad ending, so. We have this chapter, and then, eh, um, and then we have our destined end, lovey end chapter, god damn it, I'm trying to, like, turn that off and it keeps turning back on anyway so yeah i'm gonna wrap this part up here and we'll continue with this chapter in the next part and i don't know i mean i don't know how long this chapter is this i'm surprised um what is this like the third part i didn't think it would be that long you know what i mean like i didn't think we'd get that many parts out of each one of their endings but yeah i mean we'll get at least probably another two parts because we have to finish this, then we have to do the bad ending, and we have to do the epilogue. So, like, you know, between all of that, at least two parts. So, anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.